Hello and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Sora Darkchild, and welcome back to Let's Replay Final Fantasy II. Last time, we went up to uh, the town called Salamand because Princess Hilda said that you know, she's had a spy over there that uh, said that the uh, Empire's Guard herds have been taking people from that village into a nearby cave to mine for mithril for their armor and weapons. While we were there, we ran into who, one of us who was named Joseph, who had a daughter that was kidnapped so that they can get to him, but thankfully, we saved her and got the mithril, so that's one step hip of things happening for the good guys. And apparently when I learned one of the uh, passwords or keywords hers used in this game, I forgot that I learned of the town called Bafisk, which is the next town that we're going to be heading to after clearing that area. Mimu will hang out with us for a little bit longer. Looks like I'm going to be walking there the long way around. Alright, we're halfway there. We just need to go around this mountain over here. Just gotta go around this mountain right here, and then we're there. And Minwu, I think I'll give you... a battle axe. Ooh, that doesn't look good there. We're going to need to look into that. Welcome to Bafit. Basic. You'll need to pass the board the dreadnought. You're with the rebels, right? You've got to destroy the dreadnought. We'll see what we can do. What's this? Back to work. Work, I say. Hey. If we finish even one day sooner, my glory will be exponentially greater. Hmm. 
Not good weapons here. Let's hope the armor is better. Nope. We're good with our mithril equipment for the moment. Now. What have they got in magic? Mostly white magic spells, huh? Okay. Two of each. There we go. Now then. And I see an opening right there in the bottom left corner. General Borgen took command of things in Bassetquell a short while ago. Things have been getting much easier than they were under the Dark Knight. It's hard to believe He've a bumbling idiot like Borgen, and could become a general in the Imperial Army. Oops, um, you didn't hear that. So, you're the one sent to destroy the Dreadnought. Don't worry, I'm on your side. There's an entrance to the sewers up ahead. It's a uh, back way he... It's a back way leading to the Dreadnought. Be careful. If they see us talking, they may start to get suspicious. So I'm out of here. Good luck. It would have been less suspicious if you actually fought us. Pretending that you're on their side. Anyway... Random encounters aside, let's get moving. A long sword, nice. the hell zombies
All right, guys, we're almost there. and it looks like a boss up ahead. Who's gonna get the killing blow this time? You're too late! The Dreadnought is complete! I've been working behind the scenes to see the project through to completion. End your resistance. Kneel before the Emperor. It is the only alternative left for you. Consider what I've said. When the time comes, we will meet again. <laughs> Looks like you came all this way for nothing. See for yourselves. We were too late. Guess I'll be meeting you guys. He's... He's back to... Back at Altar to find out what our next move is. Hey, we found a pass inside the chest. How about that? That'll be useful. Oh dear, the town got hit pretty badly from that warship. We gotta check on Hilda, see if she and her, uh, and the king are okay. Many were wounded by in the Dreadnought's attack. The shock has even caused my father's condition to take a turn for the worse. I hate that my father has to see this. He knows. He knows his death is near. Is there nothing I... Is there nothing you can do, Mimu? All those who live must someday die. It is our fate. Still, it is my duty as a white wizard to ease the pain of those who suffer. I shall remain here and devote myself to care for the wounded. I take my leave of you. The fate of the world rests on you, Virion. Waste no time in destroying the Dreadnought. My father's condition is, has, has improved, moved a great deal thanks to Mimwu. Many lives were taken in the Dreadnought's attack. How are we supposed to fight something as terrible? Uh, let's see. We got a pass. Nothing happened. Let's see.
Anything to learn? Let's talk to the king. See if there's anything he can be of assistance with here. So many he perished in the Dreadnought's attack. Perhaps it would be best if we surrender to the Empire. Nothing, huh? Hmm. The King illness goes beyond the, the physical. There is little I can do. Let's see. Airship. No one knows more about airships than Sid. He was such a fine knight once. Oh, how men change. Let's ask that about uh, airships to Hilda. Maybe she can help with that too. No? Then I guess the uh, king gave us a tiny bit of a hint and go talking to Sid. Which is what we're going to do. Which means I'm in for a long walk again. Not unless I pay for another boat trip. You want on the airship, eh? The guy behind me. What do you want? What you want to do is blow up that thing's engine. And do that, and you can bring down the whole overgrown tub. Thanks for the advice, buddy. So, where do we go after this? Back to Salamand, of course. Wait. I want to keep talking to you. Learn that. Airships are powered by Sunfire. Her, I'm sure the Dreadnought's no different. Okay. We should know that. Now I think we head back to Salomon. Actually, let's head back to uh, Alter. Suggest the Sunfire to, uh, somebody, like, maybe, uh, Hilda, who might know something about it. Then I'll go back to Salamand. I believe that's what the order is. I want to see if I can get as much done in this, uh, episode as I can.
Sunfire is the crest of the kingdom of Kashon. Its flame still burns on the ground floor of Kashon Keep. Scott and Gordon had told me many stories concerning the flame. The finger points of the tail are not known to me. However, I seem to recall that the flame cannot be held in just any touch. Torch. Sid told us as we might be able to use sunflower to, Sunfire to destroy the Dreadnought. Then there's no time to waste. You must depart her percussion keep at once. If you hire Sid's airship, your journey should ta not take long. That leaves only one question. What can you use to bring the Sunfire... Sunfire back. Good question. Very, very good question. Let's mention this to the king. He might know something. Scott sealed the gates of the Kashan gates to protect the Sunfire in the event and they were defeated in battle. You will need the Goddess Bell to break the seal! Goddess Bell? Alright. Return to Hilda and mention the bell. A lot of back and forth in this episode today. I've heard the Scott and Gordon mention the bell. The gates of Kashan open only to the voice of a uh, Kashan or the ringing of that bell. The bell rests deep within the, a cavern on the snow plains. It will not be easy to retrieve. So it is your intent Intention to enter the snow cavern? Very well. If only Gordon were here. Her, there should be no need for you to risk such danger. But he isn't, so you must. There is nothing I can do but pray for your success. Joseph knows most the snow plains like the back of his hand. You should seek his counsel. And we will. See you back at Salamand. Welcome back to Salamand. Hey Joseph, you feel like paying that debt we did for your daughter? It looks like you managed to save my daughter. Thank you. That Carly Borgen had been threatening Nelly to get to me. The only way to reach the snow cavern is on my snow craft. I keep the snow craft hitting in the mine. There's a blue stone on the first floor that make, that marks the spot. Look behind the stone, home to the right. Hey, the secret room there, and the snow craft is inside. I'm sorry, I couldn't help you find the mithril. So, I want to make up for that by pitching in now. What are we waiting for? Let's go. We get our second fourth companion, Joseph. And the best thing for him on weapons? He doesn't need them. No, he doesn't. He, uh, he's fine with a uh, bare hand. Hand-to-hand -hand combat. And you remember that cave we've been in last episode? Well, we're visiting that place again, but we're only going to be there for about five seconds.
And there's the gem. Joseph turns a small rock jut jut jutting out of the wall and a passage opens. The snowcraft is in here. Alrighty. Now we can go to the snowy plains. There we go, that's better. Now, off to the snowy plains. There we go. Those aren't snowmen, they're more like yetis. And you're probably wondering why am I having Joseph being the only one attacking? I'm trying to bring up his attack with his fists. And I'm doing a pretty good job of it too, because I got it up to level 5. Snow Cavern. Huh, a dead head and a zombie. Yeah, I think throughout this entire dungeon, I'm gonna have Joseph doing all the fighting. Till I think his uh, fists are at a sufficient level. that door. Probably can't get in. Get in through there anyway. Gotta take the rougher path.
Let's see. I'm also trying to get every treasure in this cave, too. To continue forward, I had to go down and around, but I'm gonna hold that off for a second because I'm trying to get every treasure chest in this cave. Okay, I think I've got Joseph up to level 6 with his fist, which I think will be good enough for considering I don't want to spoil it for anyone. You'll see what happens at very soon. So now, everyone attack. When we get to the boss, I want Joseph to do the honors in fighting this boss. Revenge for, uh, taking his daughter away from him.
through that arch is the way down. Man, these ice caves are very easy when Maria is at full level with her fire bow. Hey, we found a room full of beavers. Gotta talk to this one. Guys, speak beaver. Secret passage in wall to right. Monster guard bell. Bell and wall. Well, thank you for that, Mr. Beaver. I think that's all we needed to know. Now, oh, if I can just find the way. There we go. Time for our next boss. It's an animated tortoise guarding the bell. Well, stay on your toes.
Good job, Joseph. There's something set in the wall. It's the goddess bell. And now to get out of here. Which unfortunately means I gotta take all the equipment I have on Joseph off of him. You're gonna see why in just a few seconds. Curses, you've already gotten the gun! This bell. First, you ruin my standing with the Emperor, and now this! The Emperor will never forgive me for messing this up. If I ever go back to the Empire, he'll have my head. But I'm still a soldier. If I'm gonna die, you're coming with me. Not if I have anything to say about that. And Joseph? He's all yours! Actually, uh, Maria? I want you to cast Protect on him. Bye-bye! That's what you get for kidnapping his daughter, you bastard. <laughs> I may have lost, but don't think that you've won. My booby trap? I booby trapped this cave. You've just a little parting gift from me to you. I'll be waiting for you in hell. <sighs> Try to take us all out Indiana Jones style. Damn it. Go on. Get out. We won't leave you. I can't. Hold it much longer! Run! It's up to you! Now, Virion, my sweet Nelly. Joseph! And thus. The first of our comrades to fall in battle, due to a booby trap falling Indiana Jones style. But now that we got the uh, goddess bell, where do we go from here? What's gonna happen to Joseph's daughter, Nelly? We probably won't know the answer to that one, but find out next time for where we go next in Let's Replay Final Fantasy II. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. If you did, hit that like and subscribe button, leave a comment if you want, ring the bell to be notified when our next video comes out. 
Ring the bell to be notified when the next video comes out. We do new videos every Tuesday, Thursday, and occasionally Saturday and Sundays. Till the next video, this is Sword Archild, signing off. Have a nice day, night, folks.